wildlife. Untouched scenery. An infinite diversity of species in all forms and colors. Extreme living conditions. Dangerous predators. All this comes to mind when we hear the term wildlife. But it means far more than this marvelous concept of flora and fauna. Wild animals are regarded as all those that are not household pets. We are currently aware of more than a million animal species on Earth, but not all have been discovered, not by a long shot. When we think of wild animals, we think first of mammals, lions, tigers, elephants and rhinos, bears, wolves and apes. but also birds, like parrots, for instance. And pelicans. Or flamingos. Butterflies and the almost imperceptible world of insects are all categorized as wildlife and are worthy of the same regard as mammals. Diverse habitats represent different challenges for flora and fauna, forcing species to continually change and adapt. Thus, the most varied species of animals and plants have evolved techniques for the intake of food, formed symbioses with other species, or generated defense mechanisms to ensure their survival. Survival in the wilderness. On our foreway through the habitats of the wild, we encounter the great white egret. Egrets, a family of wading or stalking birds, which includes 62 species, mostly have long legs and dagger-like beaks. Many types also have long necks. Egrets are almost exclusively found in freshwater areas. Their food consists mainly of fish and other water-dwelling creatures, which are sought in shallow waters. Egrets are found all over the world. Not quite so fixed in its habitat is the Amazon parrot. The 31 known species make Amazon parrots the largest group in the parrot family, 16 of which are in danger of extinction. With a body length of 25 to 45 centimeters, Amazon parrots are considerably smaller than macaws. Their plumage consists of broad, rounded feathers, predominantly green. Throughout their large range of distribution, which mainly lies in the tropical regions of Central and South America, individual Amazon parrots populate very different habitats.
macaws, a species of the parrot family, are indigenous to South and Central America. They get their name from the Indians who called them after the cries they make. They prefer to live in pairs, generally raising their young in nesting holes, which they find in the broken trunks of palm trees or hollows. short-tailed parrots are, like the macaws, New World parrots, and are to be encountered on the banks of the Amazon. They resemble their Amazonian cousins in their green coloring, but have distinctively short tails. Typical of macaws are their masks. Its red-brown makes this soldier macaw even more distinctive. Macaws have very strong claws and a powerful beak which represents excellent climbing and grasping tools, especially useful when it comes to cracking the often very hard shells of palm fruits and nuts. Macaws are purely vegetarian, preferring fruits, nuts, and berries. As tropical plants and nuts often contain toxins which macaws are unable to propel through a special digestive tract, they can be observed regularly consuming quantities of mud. This provides them with the minerals they need to neutralize the plant toxins and ease digestion. This toucan is likewise very much at home here in the rainforest. Although its splendid plumage is similar to that of a parrot, the toucan belongs to the woodpecker family. Toucans feed predominantly on fruit and palm nuts, but will also consume insects, spiders, and even small reptiles. They drink from bromeliads or simply open their beaks to catch water during rainfall. Its trademark, the huge, colorful beak, is actually lighter than it appears and serves the toucan for more than just feeding. In high outside temperatures, the non-insulated surface of the beak acts as a cooling unit which dissipates excess body heat. We are now leaving the depths of the jungle and moving back towards the coastal regions. Here we meet the white ibis, a wader or stalking bird of the ibis subfamily, which is found in America. 
It prefers to inhabit coastal regions, lagoons, wetlands, and mangrove swamps. The white ibis feeds on fish, shrimp, mollusks, and insects. They breed in large colonies together with other water birds on bushes and trees. Our friend the great white egret is on the lookout for prey, preferably insects, amphibians, fish, or mice. Normally the great white egret wades slowly through the shallows in search of food, with its body held more or less horizontally. Otherwise, it waits in a rigid position until its prey gets within striking range. see a flock of female frigate birds, the pirates of the avian world. Frigate birds are notorious for attacking other birds and snatching their prey. Male frigate birds are famed for their courtship rituals as they are able to inflate their bright red throat pouches and so impress the females. are known as the Pozo de las Golondrinas, or Swallow Springs. Their dark, damp environment makes them an ideal nesting place for swallows. before sunset. An amazing natural spectacle can be observed. Thousands of swallows returning to their nests in the springs, appearing to plunge into their depths.
Along the Amazon River, there are many shallow waters, pools, and lakes. A good habitat for flamingos. Flamingos belong to the order of the birds and combine five species in their family. Their origin is not yet conclusively explained, and they are presumed to represent the link between wading and water birds. Common characteristics are the more or less deep pink plumage, as well as the highly specialized beak. The edge of the beak has a lamella structure, which, together with the tongue, creates a filtering device enabling flamingos to filter plankton from the water. Flamingos prefer alkaline or salty lakes as habitats. Some of these bodies of water contain high concentrations of chloride, sodium carbonate, sulfates or fluorides, which make them almost impossible for other animals to inhabit. In fact, it has been noted that the more fish a lake contains, the fewer flamingos will be found, as fish represent feeding rivals. But such shallow waters are also in danger of drying up, forcing the flamingos to go on long marches in search of new feeding grounds. With a wingspan of up to four meters and weighing up to 13 kilograms, pelicans are very large water birds indeed. The smallest of the species, the brown pelican, has a two meter wingspan and weighs four kilograms. We're now leaving the water and going in search of the animals more usually associated with the term wildlife, the predatory cats.
perfect hunters. The predatory cats are almost always carnivores. Their magnificent hunting technique has placed them at the peak of the food chain in every continent and in many habitats. All species possess very powerful muscular bodies, sharp teeth and claws, good senses, and fast reflexes. The largest predatory cats of the rainforests are the leopard and the jaguar. While the leopard is indigenous to Africa and Asia, the jaguar can only be found in the Americas. A black panther is actually a leopard with too much dark pigmentation. The coat appears to be completely black, although the coat's spotted pattern is always recognizable in certain light. In the case of leopards, the black coloring is caused by a recessive, albeit not outwardly visible, gene. This recessive gene can also exist in normal colored leopards without actually having any influence on the yellow of the coat. This means that normal animals, which have inherited the recessive gene, can give birth to a litter with black leopards, even when both parents are normal. With jaguars, as opposed to leopards, this gene is dominant, so that black cubs can only appear if one parent is also black, although two black parents can also produce normal cubs. Jaguars are mavericks, or loners, and depending on the accessibility of their prey, require a permanent territory of 25 to 150 square kilometers, only approaching others of the opposite sex during the mating season. Despite their heavy frames, they are good climbers and even excellent swimmers. Although jaguars are diurnal, they nevertheless spend half the day at rest, as we see here. When hunting, they sneak up on their prey, killing it with a powerful bite after a brief chase. The jaguar's menu consists of nearly all mammals native to the jungle, and even fish or small caimans. The puma is the largest among the smaller cats. Also known as cougars or mountain lions, they live in remote mountain regions of North and South America. The puma is a loner, avoiding others of its kind except in the mating season. Its territorial range, from 50 to 1,000 square kilometers, depends on food supply and access to sexual partners. Pumas prey upon mammals of almost all size and species. In North America, elk, Deer and reindeer are their favorite prey, although they avoid reptiles and carrion. Here we encounter an ocelot. Ocelots tend to be nocturnal hunters whose main diet consists of smaller vertebrates. They belong to the Pardalis species or Leopardus genus of the Felidae family. Also known as the dwarf leopard, it is smaller in stature than its predatory cousins and with a body length of one to two meters, about the same size as a domestic cat. Ocelots are characterized by a gray or yellow-brown pelt, which is flecked with black. All species are native to the Americas.
At the top of the food chain in the water is the crocodile. That is one of the reasons why these reptiles have remained apparently unchanged for about 250 million years. But appearances can be deceiving. Although its stature has remained unaltered over millennia, the crocodile has adapted to new and altered habitats. The saltwater crocodile, also known as the estuarine or Indo-Pacific crocodile, is the largest living crocodile today, closely followed by the Nile crocodile. It belongs to the real crocodile family and is a species most widely found in the oceans, but often also inland, in brackish waters, rivers and swamps. Saltwater crocodiles are the only crocodiles able to survive in both salt and fresh water. such as these offer another hunter shelter as well as a special territory. Bats and flying foxes are the only mammals that can fly. They are also equipped with echolocation which enables them to find their way in the dark and hunt insects without using their eyes. To achieve this they emit ultrasonic waves which bounce back as echoes. The brain enables them to envisage their surroundings by the interval between these reflections and thus determine the distance from a tree or insect and even the direction and speed at which their prey is moving. Bats, however, are also welcome prey for snakes, like this corn adder, which is a dusk and nocturnal predator. With more than 1,700 different types, vipers, composed by far the greatest number of species among the snake family. Almost 60% of all known snake species. Apart from the sea, they have settled in all biotopes accessible to reptiles and live in temperate, subtropical and tropical regions of Eurasia, Africa, North and South America. Among the vipers, there are types that live on the ground, burrow and even those that climb. Vipers have a rich spectrum of prey, consisting of small mammals, birds, lizards, amphibians, fish, arthropods, and mollusks. The variety according to the snake's size ranges from termites up to whole crocodiles. Snakes register their prey's olfactory information with their tongues and attack at the right moment with lightning speed. Several species are poisonous, using their venom to kill their prey on the one hand and also aid digestion on the other, as their prey is often swallowed whole. This corn adder, for example, kills its prey by strangulation. To this effect, it wraps its extremely muscular body several times around its prey, already fixed in position with its jaws, and then increases the pressure on its inner organs until death occurs.
the rich diversity of nature and color and form is nowhere better expressed than in the plant world, and especially by that queen of flowers, the orchid. There are approximately 1,000 kinds with over 30,000 species. This makes orchids, after Asteraceae, the second largest family of flowering plants. No other plant family can boast such an array of form, color, and pattern of blooms as the orchid. The size of its petals varies from several millimeters up to 20 centimeters per flower. Volcanic lava rock is not generally inviting for the plants and animals that settle there. And yet, plants and animals adapt and use every opportunity to obtain nutrients, especially in rainforests, which often stand on rather nutrient-poor soil as essential minerals have been swept away by water or buried too deeply underground for their roots. Orchids are masters of adaptation. Not only do their roots absorb nutrition, but they also attach and firmly anchor themselves to other plants. Sometimes they even form tuberous reservoirs for storing nutrients in times of scarcity. Most orchids are at home in forested areas, providing enough water and nutrition. But there is an acute lack of daylight on the ground, which over the course of evolution has inspired many orchid species to settle on trees. But only to access light, not nourishment. This way of life is known as epiphytic. Thus, differentiating between the orchids which only grow on the bark of trees from those which thrust their roots into small mounds of moss or humus that have formed, for example, in the forks of branches. Here we have a famous species of bromeliad, the pineapple. Bromeliads are evergreen, hardy herbaceous plants which can grow terrestrially as well as epiphytically. Because of their fluttering flight and ornate wings, butterflies and moths are the most popular insect species. The most splendid patterns are mainly found on butterflies which only compose about 15% of the 165,000 butterfly species. The most and the loveliest species of butterfly are to be encountered in the tropics, such as this green malachite butterfly which belongs to the swallowtail family. Likewise, this blue owl butterfly, Calico urilocus. The riotous pattern on the underside of the wings serves as camouflage. Once the butterfly folds its wings into a stationary position, it is virtually indistinguishable from the bark of a tree. The upper side, however, is generally adorned with more striking colors. Although monarch butterflies have a very brief lifespan, they have flown almost 2,900 kilometers in those nine months. They are obviously very active, and this activity can be best observed in the winter when the butterflies move into their winter quarters. 
95% of the monarch butterflies winter in Mexico and California, where they gather on trees in large groups. In mid-January and February, the large clusters detach from their apex and the butterflies migrate down into valleys to form smaller and less compact clusters. The butterflies leave the trees sporadically to sip nectar and liquid at the edges of small puddles and mud pools. As the monarch butterflies migrate from the territory of 100 million hectares to the Mexican Sierra Nevada between September and November to congregate in an area of only 20 hectares, this is where the huge collection of butterflies can best be observed. The approximately 30 colonies are scattered over nine separate volcano massives in southern Mexico. In the spring, the butterflies set forth once again on their journey to the north, where they lay their eggs and die. Let's spend a moment watching the vibrant doings of the monarch butterflies. A few tiers above the ground, we find the habitat of the apes. Most apes are tree dwellers, but while the New World apes have tails, which they can use to balance or grasp, the tails of the Old World apes have retracted over the course of time. Most apes live in groups, are diurnal, and eat predominantly fruit, which they can easily identify in the thick jungle, as they generally have acute color vision sight has greater importance than their audio sense. Brown spider monkeys are, as all other spider monkeys, slender primates with long, thin extremities and a long tail. With a head torso length of 40 to 58 centimeters, the tail at 68 to 90 centimeters is considerably longer than the body.
brown spider monkeys reach sexual maturity within three to five years. After a seven-month pregnancy, the female gives birth and raises her young alone. In early childhood, the suckling firmly clings to the belly of its mother, later climbing onto her back and allowing itself to be carried around. Young males remain in the group into which they were born, while the young females join other groups upon reaching sexual maturity. Brown spider monkeys typically reach an age of about 25 years and can live for up to 40 years in captivity. Apes have relatively large brains in proportion to their size. The neocortex, which is associated with creative thinking, is particularly well developed. This is especially important for solving conflicts within the social group in which the apes prefer to live. Thus, they can consciously delude their own kind, but can also produce tools in order to obtain food, for example. Spider monkeys are very clever. They swing extremely swiftly through the branches, either with four legs or hand over hand, and can leap incredibly long distances using the tail as a fifth limb. But despite their extreme dexterity, spider monkeys have been known to fall. If they have gripped a rotten branch, for instance, or been blown off course by a gust of wind. Broken arms or legs so caused, however, are known to heal relatively quickly. The existence of almost all the wild animals living on our planet is endangered. As never before in our history, plants, animals and their habitats need our special protection. We, humankind, are growing ever more numerous, displacing plants and animals and causing the extinction of many species with ever increasing rapidity. Thus it is vital that we learn more about nature recognize and grasp the complex structures between animal, plant, and man. For only then can we succeed in using the treasures of nature without destroying them. <laughs>